Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck. All right, all right, I caved. I'm finally doing it. I'm finally doing what so many people have asked me to do. And it's actually one of the easiest things in the world to do. It only has two ingredients. And if you didn't know by now what this thing is, well, it's white, it's creamy. No, I'm not talking about marshmallow fluff. We're talking about yogurt, guys. We're making yogurt today, I know. Can you believe it, yogurt? And uh, it's gonna be really, really easy. It just takes a little bit of time to do, but it's not time you have to tend to. You can actually start this right before you go to bed like I'm about to do. So because I have two Instant Pots, I'm gonna make two different kinds of yogurt. Now that's gonna be a regular yogurt and a Greek yogurt. Now what's the difference between the two? Well, a regular yogurt is not strained and it's really creamy, whereas a Greek yogurt is strained and all the whey gets separated out from it. You know, like, you know, Little Miss Muffy eating her curds and whey, which actually sounds gross. But anyway, it separates the whey out from it, making it a much thicker yogurt. And we're gonna make a little bit of a difference between the two. We're gonna cook one a couple hours longer than the other because the longer you cook a yogurt, the tangier it is. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I can make yogurt now? Yes, you can make yogurt, and it's really quite simple. So guys, right to the Instant Pot, here we go, yogurt. So there are two different kinds of yogurts we can make, and I'm gonna show you how to do both. We're gonna make one batch in the duo over here, and that's going to be regular unstrained yogurt, which is a creamier yogurt. And in my ultra over here, I am going to do a strained yogurt, which is also called Greek yogurt. And that means all the way is gonna come out and it's gonna be a lot thicker. Both of these things are gonna be super easy to do. They're just gonna require a little bit of an ultra pasteurized type of milk and a little bit of yogurt to start it. And it's that simple. So let's go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with this stuff called Fair Life. It is an ultra pasteurized, lactose-free milk product here, and it's actually fantastic for making a really, really good, a quicker yogurt in the instant pot. It's not gonna be quick. It's just gonna be faster and less of a hassle than boiling the milk ahead of time, then you have to get a thermometer and to read it. And to me, it, there's no point in doing that. We can just cut out a step, save us some money by not having to buy an electric thermometer if we don't have it, and we can just go with the fair life. So guys, because we're doing this thing called the cold start method, where we don't have to boil any milk ahead of time, that's why we're using Fairlife here. That means you have to use an ultra pasteurized style milk. That means you cannot use regular milk. You have to use something of this nature like Fairlife. And also this stuff is great. It's fantastic. And you want to know why? Because look at this. Look at the nutrition things down here. So it has more protein than regular milk and almond milk as well as less sugar than regular milk and almond milk. And it's also, guys, look at this. It's lactose free. It's a fantastic substitute and it's actually quite good for you. Full of good stuff. So I'm going to take a 52 ounce bottle of the Fairlife milk and pour it in the Instant Pot. I'm doing this for two Instant Pots, by the way, um, but I'm only gonna show one of them because we're gonna be doing the exact same thing in each pot. And the other ingredient we have for this recipe, guys, is only two of them, is yogurt. So I'm using a whole milk Greek yogurt. Chobana here is fine. I'm only gonna add in two tablespoons of this thing into each vat of yogurt that I make. With each 52 ounce bottle of the Fairlife milk, I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of this kind of yogurt. Now, it has to have two ingredients in this yogurt. We need to make sure that it's made with milk and that it also it contains live and active cultures. You see that? That's also key, and that is a requirement, guys. It has to have live and active cultures, and it has to have a form of milk in the ingredients, all right? So it's also super important to know that you have to be using an unopened container of yogurt. Make sure you use a fresh one for this. All it has to be is one of these little tiny ones, you know, one of these, like, you know, five and a half ounce size ones. So that's all you're gonna need, but make sure it's fresh and unopened before you use it. Because once opened, yogurt loses all of the active cultures very quickly due to all the air and the exposure. And now just take a whisk and whisk up the yogurt with the Fairlife. And because I want to make one of my yogurts sweet, I'm going to add to one of the batches one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. This stuff is basically liquid caramel. And then whisk that up. Make sure it's nice and stored in with the milk and with the yogurt starter. And then after we're finished whisking, I'm going to now take my lid and place it on the pot. And we'll make sure we're in sealing position, but this isn't actually gonna be coming to pressure when we're cooking it. This is not a pressure cooking setting with the yogurt setting. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if you use a glass lid or this lid. But I'm gonna keep it in sealing position because if we had a glass lid, it would basically be keeping it inside anyway. All right, so now let's come down to the instant pots. And because I'm doing two different pots, I'm gonna show you two different models to show you how this will work. I'm gonna use the Duo series here. What I'm gonna do on that is I'm gonna hit the yogurt button and make sure we are on the normal setting. It can't be on the more or the less setting. It must be on the normal setting for eight hours and it's going to cook for eight hours and that's exactly what I want. 
and then I'm gonna come over to my ultra and I'm gonna turn the knob down here until the yogurt's flashing, select that. We want it on the medium setting, which is the same thing as a normal setting on the duo pot. But on this one, guys, I'm gonna go for 10 hours of time, okay? Because actually the longer that you make yogurt cook in the pot, the tangier it gets. So let's go for eight hours on the other and 10 hours on this one, all right? And now I'm gonna hit the start button. And there are two Instant Pots cooking yogurt, and as they work really hard overnight to make some delicious yogurt, I'm gonna go to sleep. All right, pleasant dreams, good night. And just so you know, the one that I'm cooking in my duo over here, this batch of yogurt, is going to be my regular yogurt, and the one that I'm cooking inside of the Ultra is going to become my Greek, AKA strained yogurt. So that's gonna be thicker yogurt, that's gonna be more creamy yogurt. And with that, I'm going to sleep. Good night, see you in the morning. Yogurt, yogurt, no yogurt. Oh, 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 oh. oh, my yogurt's ready. All right, and all right, I get it. Enough. All right, now that eight hours have passed, it's gonna say yogurt on the display, or yogurt, or yo nine t, whatever, yogurt. So that means it's incubated, it's fully incubated at this point. I'm gonna now take the lid off, and I'm not gonna stir, and I'm gonna transfer it to the fridge to sit for another four to eight hours. So again, guys, when we're cooking yogurt, we're not coming to pressure, it's not pressure cooking, so the pin's not gonna pop up, there's gonna be no releasing, none of that stuff. It's gonna be basically incubating in there the entire time. So let's just take our lid off, and there's our yogurt. And now, I should say the pot isn't hot at all. It incubates at a very, very low temperature, so it's really gonna be very cool to the touch right when you take it out of the Instant Pot. And you're gonna see, we're gonna leave it in here. We are not gonna stir it. And I'm telling you right now, it smells exactly like yogurt should. It smells great, and you can see it's already kinda thick in there. I'm not gonna mix it up. I'm just gonna let it sit in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this up with some tin foil and then pop it in the fridge between four to eight hours so it chills. We need to make sure it does that. Now again, this is not a quick recipe to do. It's actually very time consuming. It's first eight to 10 hours to incubate the yogurt. The longer you incubate it, the more tangy it'll be. And then another four to eight hours in the refrigerator to let it set or then strain, which I'll do with the next batch. So you're looking at between 12 to 16-ish hours of time. But on the other hand, it's a breeze to do. There's really absolutely no effort that goes into this except for just waiting. That's why I suggest you do step one when the yogurt's incubating overnight. So I'm gonna cover you with some tin foil, and then pop you in the fridge. Well, the yogurt, not you. And there you go, and I'll be back to check on you in four to eight hours. All right. And now that our second batch is done, it says yogurt, we're finished. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this batch of yogurt and we're going to strain it and we're gonna make it the Greek yogurt. It's gonna be really thick. So I'll take that lid off and, well, there's our other yogurt. And you see guys, this is kind of firm if I wobble it around in there already, which is great. But uh, this is gonna be a little tangier than our other yogurt that's gonna be regular yogurt and not Greek because we're not straining the other one, this one we're going to, because I incubated this one for two more hours. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this to a yogurt strainer. And now for my yogurt strainer, because I feel like it's the easiest thing to use and the best results, I'm using this Euro Cuisine yogurt strainer. It has a real lid that comes with it, and this is what it looks like. Here's the straining portion, and here's the bowl that it strains into. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour our yogurt into this section, and then eventually all of the whey will drip down into this part. That's kind of like that yellowishy clear liquid. If you don't have one of these and you don't feel like getting one, you can use a large strainer with some coffee filters instead. But honestly, this thing has one purpose in life, and that's to strain, especially amazing Greek yogurt, so I do suggest getting this if you plan on making a lot of it. Okay, and now I'm gonna pour my yogurt right into the strainer. Great. And looking at the strainer from a side view, you'll see that the whey is dripping through the yogurt, through the strainer, into the bottom portion where it's catching all of it. And that's exactly what we want it to do. We're gonna let it do that for between four to eight hours. The longer you can wait, I feel like the better. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cover the top of the strainer and then pop it in the fridge. There's our lid. And there we go, sitting right next to its brother inside the fridge. Now, as a quick little recap, let's remember what we did here. This batch is going to be our regular, AKA unstrained yogurt. It's still gonna be thick, but it's gonna be creamier for sure. Also, it's gonna be a little bit less tangy than this one because we incubated this for eight hours and we did this one for 10 hours. But it's certainly gonna be sweeter because we added a can of condensed milk to this, which is totally optional, you don't have to do that. So you're gonna see, after between four to eight hours for each of these sitting in the fridge, I would suggest you go for eight hours if possible. 
possible. The longer it sits in there, the better. So we're gonna have a nice unstrained, thick and creamy sweet yogurt over here, and we're gonna have a strained Greek yogurt over here that's gonna be a little more tangy because it's incubated a little longer, and then that's it. All right, guys, I'm gonna see you a little later. Bye-bye. Okay, and now actually 10 hours have passed because I've had a long day and I'm back home and I'm gonna try these out. So let's see how it is, guys. So I'm gonna start with my Greek strained yogurt here and you're gonna see how all the way has dripped to the bottom from the strainer inside of this thing here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the lid off and check it out, let's see. Look at that, guys. Look at that yogurt. It is gonna be mega thick. Let's check it out. And let's see here. Yeah, incredibly thick yogurt and that's fantastic. This is just what a Greek yogurt should be. Absolutely perfection, just like this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer it to another bowl and get it out of the strainer and then just let it sit there. And by the way, we wanna be careful with these strainers when we're removing the yogurt. We don't, but, and by the way, we wanna be careful with the strainers when we're removing the yogurt. We don't wanna like, you know, prick it too hard on the sides because it's pretty fragile. There's a very, very fine little sieves here that all the way drips through to separate it from uh, the yogurt to make it super thick, strained, and well, Greek, all right? Let's add it to a bowl. And then once you remove the strainer from the top, you'll see all the way that is inside of the little compartment here where it caught all the drippings. Some people like to use whey when they make bread, and you could do that, for sure, absolutely. It's here, why not? And even though this like Oprah, I love bread, I'm not gonna be making it today, so I'm just gonna discard this and pour it down the drain. And I've just finished transferring all of my really thick, fabulous Greek yogurt to a little bowl here, which I'll put a lid on when I pop it in the fridge. But we're, of course, we're gonna try it out first. But you see, the Greek yogurt consistency is super thick, and it's gonna be absolutely fabulous. It looks like there might be some lumps in there, but they're actually not lumps at all. It's just the way that it formed. They just melt into nothing once you touch them. It's perfect. All right, let's check out our unstrained regular yogurt that I've also sweetened. And now I've just taken my unstrained regular yogurt out of the fridge, and there we go. Now, let's see how this holds up when we put a spoon inside of it. People do that a lot. Look at that, it sticks right up, beautiful. Let's take it on out now, and you're gonna see that this yogurt, when I move it around, is definitely creamier than our Greek yogurt. You see that? It's a nice creamy consistency. It's still on the thicker side, but nice and creamy. Exactly how I like my yogurt. So Greek yogurt I like to use more for dips, and you're gonna see that in the video that I'll make next. But uh, this, guys, is gonna be fabulous. All right, so let me put some of this in a bowl. And to do a perfect side-by-side -side comparison, you see I have my unstrained yogurt over here, which makes for a much creamier yogurt. And remember, I also sweetened this up and I also cooked it for less time, so it's gonna be a little less tangy and it's also gonna be sweeter. And then coming over here, I have my strained Greek yogurt, which is a lot thicker, as you can see. It's definitely a lot thicker and it's gonna be perfect for dips, like a tzatziki, so stay tuned for that. And this one I incubated for two hours longer, so it's gonna be a little tangier in flavor, but it's not sweetened, so it's not gonna be sweet at all. It's just gonna have a yogurt flavor to it. A lot of people love Greek yogurt. I happen to actually prefer the unstrained yogurt. It's a lot smoother and creamier. And anything you're not using for now, just put a lid on it, make sure it's nice and tight, and then just pop it in the fridge. The yogurt, no matter what kind you do, will be good in the fridge for two weeks, as long as it's covered nicely. Okay, let's try it out. All right, guys, I'm gonna try my Greek yogurt out first, my strained yogurt, my thick, unsweetened yogurt. And here we go, it's really very thick. Mmm, mmm, it tastes like Greek yogurt. Um, there's not a lot of flavor going on here, again, because there's no sugar or anything added to this. It's simply just the Fairlife and the yogurt starter. Um, but it's very healthy, and it tastes exactly like a Greek yogurt would in the market. Um, it's good for you. Thick, full of protein, and calcium. And it's great if you want to add a little honey to it, a little bit of fruit you could top it with, and then swirl it around, and then you can make it what you want. It's also going to be, like I said, fabulous for dips, and I'm going to make an amazing tzatziki dip in this in the next video, so you're not going to want to miss that. And guys, I mean, it's beautiful that you can make this at home. It's really very nice, because Greek yogurt can cost some money in the store uh, to buy a bunch of little tiny little containers, whereas here you can just make a whole tub of it, and you can just pop it in your fridge for two weeks, and poof, it saves you money. The ingredients came to like, I don't know, like $6 or something like that. And the strainer is about like, uh, and it varies between 15 to 20 bucks, but it's so worth it. That strainer is what made this the way that it did. So thick and perfect, look at this. If I put, take a spoon and I just do it like this, it like stays on it, it's that thick. It's gonna be beautiful for dips too. All right, it's very good, very healthy, but now let's try the unstrained regular yogurt. All right, and here's my regular unstrained creamier yogurt, which I've incubated for eight hours. So it should be a little less tangy in flavor, and I've also added condensed milk to it, so it should be sweeter in flavor. 
So let's try this out. And now look at the difference. You see how this one is like, ooh, look at that all creaminess. And I love that, it's perfect. Let's try it out. Oh, this is my jam. This is my kind of yogurt if I'm just gonna be eating yogurt. Definitely, I like my yogurt unstrained, and I like it with a little bit of condensed milk in there. It tastes exactly like those leading brands of yogurt that are so delicious, and this have amazing flavor. And again, you can add, if you want some fruit to this, some granola, whatever you want to do. Oh, it's so good. I love the unstrained yogurt, I really do. The Greek yogurt is also fabulous. Just so, I mean, if you flavor it, if you put some condensed milk in it, it'll make it sweet too, but I feel like Greek yogurt doesn't really go with being sweetened. It should just be on its own nice and thick, because again, it's gonna be a fantastic foundation for dips, like a tzatziki. Now, I know everyone has different preferences, but guys, if you're just gonna be eating yogurt on its own like this, and you want something nice and creamy, especially if you're giving it to the kids, I would say don't even strain it, not even necessary, and put a can of uh, condensed milk in there when you make it. It makes a huge difference in terms of the sweetness factor. Mmm. But again, you don't have to add it. Not necessary. You can always just, you know, do the yogurt plain without it and then add the sweetening agent when you serve it up. That works just fine too. Some honey, whatever you want to do. You can even stir in a little bit of condensed milk when it's ready now. It won't be as melded, obviously, but it'll still be delicious. And of course, top it off with berries, granola, nuts, uh, Cheetos, whatever you want to do. Cheers. So there you have it. Yogurt two ways. We have our unstrained regular yogurt and our strained Greek yogurt. And they're both fabulous. And it's amazing. The Instant Pop. What can't you do? You can't do my taxes, I guess. But guys, thank you so much for watching this. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoy these informative videos and these recipes, go to PressureLowCooking.com. There are so many there to look at. And you can pin any recipe to any board on Pinterest if that's your kind of thing. Hey, go to Facebook.com and like that page. You're not going to want to miss anything that comes out there. When a new recipe comes out, you will see it. Uh, any tips that come out, humor, any deals on items that might be relevant to you, don't want to miss that definitely like the page and of course at pressure luck for subscribing to YouTube uh, Instagram Pinterest Twitter all the stuff I have all of it guys thank you again for all your support and yo get some girt mm.